Hello, my name is Matt Clark, and I'm a lieutenant in the Denver Police Department's Major Crimes Division. This critical incident debriefing is intended to provide you with information regarding an officer-involved shooting that occurred at 1540 North Mead Street in Northwest Denver on September 12, 2020. You are about to see relevant video footage and learn about other evidence and police procedures related to the case, so you have an understanding of the details of this incident. The use of deadly force by a police officer demands a thorough investigation be completed. The Denver Police Department is committed to ensuring a full and timely investigation of these serious incidents. This allows for a comprehensive examination of the officer's actions to determine compliance with state statutes and department policies. In accordance with legislation passed in 2015, the investigation of police shootings in Denver are conducted by a multi-agency investigative team made up of members from the Denver and Aurora Police Department homicide units, as well as the Denver District Attorney's Office. All critical incident investigations are actively monitored by the Office of the Independent Monitor. A word of caution. The images and information you are about to see may be disturbing. When a police officer uses force to arrest a suspect or defend against an attack, it can be graphic and difficult to watch. In addition, there may be strong language used by those shown in the video. Viewer discretion is advised. On Saturday, September 12, 2020, around 4.05 in the morning, Adams County Sheriff's Deputy Marcus Knight was in the area of the Circle K convenience store at 5810 North Broadway. At the time, Deputy Knight was in full uniform and was driving a marked Sheriff's Department vehicle. Deputy Knight observed a white Ford Explorer with no license plates parked in the convenience store parking lot. He also observed a male who was later identified as 33-year-old Christopher Escobedo sitting in the driver's seat of the vehicle. Based upon his experience, as well as his knowledge of the recent activity in the area, Deputy Knight suspected the vehicle may be stolen. As Deputy Knight continued watching the vehicle, a female exited the convenience store and entered the front passenger seat of the vehicle. Deputy Knight communicated his observations of the vehicle to Adams County Sheriff's Deputy Matthew Tran, who was nearby. The Ford Explorer was driven out of the parking lot and then southbound on Bannock Street from 58th Avenue. Deputy Tran was directly behind the vehicle as it continued southbound on Bannock Street. Deputy Tran, who was also driving a Mark Sheriff's Department vehicle, activated the emergency lights on his vehicle to initiate a traffic stop based upon the Ford Explorer having no visible license plates. Mr. Escobedo slowed the vehicle, but continued rolling southbound for nearly a quarter of a mile before stopping in the 5300 block of Bannock Street. Deputy Tran exited his vehicle and began approaching the Ford Explorer when Mr. Escobedo rapidly accelerated away, continuing southbound on Bannock Street. Deputy Knight was still in his vehicle and began pursuing the fleeing vehicle with his lights and siren activated. While in pursuit of the vehicle, Deputy Knight observed Mr. Escobedo present a handgun out the driver's door window. The gun was initially pointed in the air. Mr. Escobedo quickly pointed the firearm in the direction of Deputy Knight and fired the weapon twice. You just held a gun out the window at me. Copy. Gun. All right. I'm to notify Denver, please. Copy. Notifying Denver, sorry. We're east on 48th. Right. 270 shooting at me. Shot fired. Shot fired. All right. Shot fired. Shot fired. All right. The vehicle pursuit continued for 14 minutes, with speeds reaching 90 miles per hour at times. During the pursuit, Mr. Escobedo fired his handgun at the pursuing deputies in the area of 48th Avenue and Fox Street, near Federal and I-70, and possibly while driving on 6th Avenue. At 4.17 a.m., the Denver Combined Communications Center received a 911 call from a female in the passenger seat of the white Ford Explorer. During the brief call, the female frantically advised the call taker that the pursuing deputies needed to back off or the driver was going to shoot her. Mr. Escobedo can be heard yelling in the background of the call. The female passenger related she did not know who the driver was. I'm actually in the car that the cops are chasing right now. And he's going to have to Where are you at? He's going to shoot me. Where are you at? Why are you not 
pulling over. I'm not, I'm not driving. You're not driving? So who's going to shoot you? Yeah. The driver of the vehicle. I don't know who he is. Deputies considered deploying tactical vehicle intervention techniques to stop the pursuit. The deputies were cautious in their distance they kept from the vehicle because of Mr. Escobedo's willingness to fire at the deputies. In the area of 14th Avenue and Sheridan Boulevard, an Adams County Sheriff's deputy deployed stop sticks, which made contact with the front and rear passenger tires of the Explorer, causing both to deflate. Mr. Escobedo lost control of the vehicle as he was turning onto eastbound West Conejos Place. He struck a parked vehicle and the vehicle became disabled on the north side of 1540 North Mead Street. When the pursuit ended, there were numerous officers from the Denver Police Department and the Adams County Sheriff's Office present. The female quickly exited the vehicle through the front passenger door and appeared to be trying to move toward one of the Denver Police Officers. Mr. Escobedo quickly followed the female out of the vehicle through the same door. He grabbed the female, put a handgun to her head, and started dragging her into the backyard of 1540 Mead Street. Officers and deputies quickly surrounded the residence, containing Mr. Escobedo to the backyard. The backyard of the residence was dark, so officers and deputies used flashlights to illuminate the portion of the yard where Mr. Escobedo had taken the female. Though not completely visible, the officers recognized the male was behind a large bush on the south side of the residence. Officers began giving commands for Mr. Escobedo to come out and to drop the handgun. Denver Police, drop the weapon! Denver Police Officer Thomas Moen assumed the primary role of giving commands. This made certain that only one person was providing clear direction to Mr. Escobedo. You need to listen. Come out right now with your hands up. Officer Moen attempted to de-escalate the situation by working to verbally engage Mr. Escobedo and gain his compliance to peacefully come out from the bushes. The officers moved back to a safer position while making contingency plans and obtaining shields for additional ballistic protection. After approximately one minute and 15 seconds, the female and Mr. Escobedo emerged from behind the bush. The female had her hands raised in the air. Mr. Escobedo was positioned behind her with his left arm around her neck and chest and his right hand holding a handgun to her head. The two slowly walked eastbound through the backyard. Officer Moen continued to attempt to de-escalate the situation and gain voluntary compliance. While officers were in the backyard of the residence, there were also officers and deputies in the Lowell Mead Street Alley, which was on the east side of the residence. From this position, Adams County Sheriff's Deputies Tran and Corey Engel were able to observe Mr. Escobedo and the female hostage through the gaps in the privacy fence. Deputy Engel was armed with an M4 SWAT rifle and Deputy Tran was armed with his duty handgun. Deputy Engel and Deputy Tran were concerned the situation was deteriorating and believed the female hostage was in immediate danger based upon Mr. Escobedo's actions and statements. Both deputies fired their weapons at Mr. Escobedo. After these shots were fired, Mr. Escobedo dropped to the ground. The female hostage was freed and quickly moved away from Mr. Escobedo towards officers. Officers and deputies positioned in the backyard and in the alley observed Mr. Escobedo continue to move on the ground with immediate access to his firearm. Deputies Engel and Tran fired additional rounds from their position in the alley. Deputy Knight and Denver Police Officers Shane Madrigal and Ramsey Zaranda fired multiple rounds from their duty handguns while positioned in the backyard. All officers stopped firing their weapons when they believed Mr. Escobedo was no longer a threat. Officers and deputies immediately approached Mr. Escobedo and began rendering aid. Paramedics quickly responded to the scene and determined Mr. Escobedo was deceased. The female hostage was assessed and found to be uninjured physically. She cooperated with the investigation. Following a police shooting, any officers involved in the incident are separated and assigned to a supervisor once the situation is stabilized. Involved officers remain in the company of the assigned supervisor throughout the initial investigation of the incident. During the scene investigation, 58 shell casings fired by the officers and deputies were recovered from the backyard and alley area. While processing the Ford Explorer 
Investigators noted the rear passenger window was broken out. Four spent 45 caliber shell casings and a bag with 45 caliber ammunition were recovered inside the vehicle. In the backyard near Mr. Escobedo's body, investigators recovered a 45 caliber Springfield XDM semi-automatic handgun. The gun was loaded with a live round in the chamber and five rounds in the magazine. Two additional magazines, each loaded with 13 rounds of 45 caliber ammunition, were also recovered near Mr. Escobedo's body. The route of the pursuit was searched by investigators. In the area of 45th Avenue and Federal Boulevard, three spent 45 caliber shell casings were recovered. A toxicology report revealed the presence of methamphetamine, amphetamine, morphine, and fentanyl in Mr. Escobedo's system. All officers assigned to uniform patrol duties in Denver have been issued body-worn cameras. These devices are generally worn at chest level by patrol officers and are capable of recording both audio and video. Prior to being activated by the officer, the body-worn camera maintains a 30-second video buffer. Once the officer activates the camera, the 30-second buffer video is captured and the camera starts recording both audio and video. It is important to note that a body-worn camera captures a general perspective of what is in the camera's view. However, this footage may or may not be what the officer actually saw or perceived. At times, an officer's movement or hand positioning may inadvertently block the camera's view. Additionally, the camera may not capture light in the same way as an officer's eye. Here is the relevant raw body camera footage that was captured by the involved Denver Police Officer's body-worn cameras. The Adams County Sheriff's deputies involved in this incident were not equipped with body-worn cameras. Again, viewer discretion is advised. I dropped my radio, John. In this backyard, I'm pretty sure. Hop this fence right here. Hop this fence. Hop this fence. Just push out. Just Hold push on, blue out. on blue. Just back up, back up. It's way back there. In here, in here. Everybody back up. He's got a gun, yeah? yeah? Back up. Back up. Everybody back up. Hey, stop moving. Stop moving right now. Do not move. We're, hey. Back up. Back up. Back up. Get some cover over here. Pull some cars up. Hey, pull the car up. Pull the car up. Pull the car up. Everybody back up. Back up. Come on, back up. Move back. Move back. We 
need a shield. Somebody's got a shield. Somebody get a shield. Hey, go around. Hey, sir. Hey, you're not. This is not. This is not what you want to be right now. The best thing for you is to come out with your hands up. Flo, get your hands up. Give me your hands. Back up. Watch. Right here. Right here. Back up, Shane. Back up, Shane. Hey, Dre, drop your gun right now. This is the best thing for you, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, bro. You need to. Hey, hey listen to me, bro. Listen to me. Shots fired, shots fired, shots fired. You good? Yeah, I think so. That's right. that shot that Ready? On me, on me, on me. Ready? Yep, let's go. Get down. Somebody get gloves on. We got gloves. Secure the gun. We got the gun secure. I got gloves. I got gloves. Move, move. Everybody okay? We're good. Holy shit. Thank you very much, guys. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. You got an ambulance code 10? Yeah. Okay. I don't think I got shot. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Yeah, I think I'm good, man. We moved up. I did not shoot. Yeah, bro, that was wild, dude. Did you get hit? No. I saw you fall back, bro. I did, yeah, because... I don't know where that shot went. That was crazy. I don't know where that went either. Obviously. Hey, bro. Hey, back over there in that in that field, my fucking radio came out. Okay. Will you we'll go look it. for it? Yeah, we'll get it. Fuck. Hey, he's still breathing. All right. He's still breathing. Let's CPR? Let's just give him CPR. CPR. Yeah. Start CPR. Take the chains off. Where's the gun at? The gun's right here. Okay. Just help me out. If you yeah. take the yeah, yeah, chains yeah. off, I'll do CPR. Give me some light. All right, buddy. Yeah, I got you. You're going to be all right. Let's go. Nothing else on him, right? No. Give me some light real quick. Give me some light. Was the girl okay? That's good. Yeah, that's good. Hold on. Pull his arm out. Pull his arm out. Nah, I don't think it's good. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't stop, just keep going.
secure. Seen secure. He's got a hostage. Stay on the air right here. Pop this fence right here. Pop this fence. We're on the corner house. Can they host me? I got one with a gun. I got a gun to the female's head. Gun to the female's head. Drop the fucking gun! What's the address here? Hey. Denver police, drop the weapon! One person talk right now. We don't need eight people talking. Hey, I'll talk. Hey, just Denver police! I need you, hey! Leave me alone, listen. Okay. Come out right now. With your hands up. Okay. Line of fire is to the east as well. Does anybody have eyes on? No. Right now, I'm in the alley, rear the house. Back up. Back up. Hey, Shane, back up. Hey, hey, sir. Hey, you're not. This is not. This is not where you want to be right now. The best thing for you is to come out with your hands up. Slow. Get your hands up. He's still Pull back, Shane, pull back. Shane, drop your gun right now. It's the best thing for you, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now. Who's got the rifle? Secure that gun. Go. Get it, get it. All right, hey. Somebody get gloves on. We got him, we got him. Secure the gun. We got get gloves on, get gloves. Yeah, it's right here. I got, I got, I got gloves, I got gloves. Somebody move, get gloves. Move. Everybody okay? We're good. Yeah. Everyone's set. Thank you very much, guys. Officers are okay. Officers are okay. All officers are okay. Suspect down, all officers are okay. You got an ambulance code 10? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think I'm good, man. We moved up. Everyone's good. Is everybody okay? Yeah. Yeah. No one's hit. Yeah, he's done. We'll, we'll wait for the ambulance. Yeah, hey, you guys want to clear and come on from the west side? All right. Yeah, we'll back a little bit. Right here. Right here. All right. If you shoot? No. 
Did you shoot Tommy? I did not shoot. All right, we got two shooters in Denver? Yeah. All right, come with me. Watch your step if you're in. Yeah. yeah, there's all kinds of stuff all over this casing. Everybody watch where you're going. Seems secure. Car got shot. Two, two shooters. More than likely. Denver police, drop the weapon! One person talk right now. We don't need Hey, see if you guys can push for. Hey, I'll, I'll talk. Who's talking? See if you can push forward the back and actually Denver see it. Police, I need you. Hey, you need to listen. Come out right now with your hands up. Okay. You guys need to back off and don't let her go. Come out right now, Sam. Back off and don't let her go. Please don't shoot me. No, we're not backing off. Everybody back up. He's got a gun, yeah? Hey, I'll, I'll stop push back once right they now. push back. Right. Do not move. Guys, back off. Yeah. Hey. Back up. Keep back coming. up. Back up. Shane, back up. Cover over here. Pull some cars up. Hey, pull a car up. Hey, pull a car up. Everybody back up. Back up. Let's go. Come on, back up. Hey, keep going. Keep move going. back. Move back. Hey. Lubick, go get, go get nice shield out of this car now. Somebody get a shield. Pull your car up here. Let's Somebody get a shield. Yeah, I can't see anything yeah, either. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, I'm going to go here. I'm going to go here. Hey, back off. Back off or I'll let go. Hey, sir. Hey, you're not, this is not, this is not what you want to be right now. The best thing for you is to come out with your hands up. Phyllis, can you back up behind this barrier right now? Oh, get your hands up. Hands up. Show me your hands. I've got my hands up, please. Please don't shoot. Back up, back up. Back up. Please, you guys, please Watch. don't shoot. Right here, right here. Back please. up, Sam. You guys back up. Please don't hey. shoot. Hey, drop, drop your gun right now. This is the best thing for please, you, dude. I'm telling you. I'm telling you right now, bro. Please, please You need don't to, shoot. hey. Hey, listen to me, bro. I fucking blast myself, yes. too, bro. Listen to me. Oh, 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 Secure that gun. On me, on me. Let's go. Yep, let's go. Right, hey. He's down. Somebody get gloves on. We got him. We got him. Secure the gun. We got the gun secure. Right here, right here, right here. I got gloves. I got gloves. Move, move. Everybody okay? Everyone set. Officer, okay. Officer, okay. Shut back down. All right, buddy. You got an ambulance code 10? Yeah. Denver 46200. Confirm that we added an ambulance code 10. Uh, male party, male constant. Someone got shot wounds. I think I got shot. Got a mag in the back there. Couple, couple. In the back yard. Yeah, everyone's fine. Hey, we got, uh, well, got that gun right, right watch here. Watch out for the gun behind you guys here. Watch out. Somebody stand by. Hey, with John, us. watch this yeah, gun. Yeah, Don't step on this. On from the west side. All right. Hey, want to step on back Four a little bit? Denver shooters. Right here. Right here. All right. Do you shoot? No. Do you shoot, Tommy? I did not shoot. All right, we got two shooters in Denver. Yeah. All right, come with me.
151 Charlie, we are eastbound 17th, crossing grain, speed is about 60, and it looks like they have at least one flat tire. Southbound Osceola from 17th, approximately 30. Back eastbound on 16th, approximately 30 from Newton. Southbound Mead from 16th, still low speeds, approximately 25. Get on the ground right now! I got you, I got you, I got you. Nope, southbound. South, I want you, I want you. That way. Are they going south, Tana? Where's he? You see him? Where's he at? I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, we're here. He's we're at 16th and Lowell Mead. We've got him at gunpoint. Come out with your hands up! Come out with your hands up! Hey, cross fire! Yep. If somebody has a long gun, that'd be helpful right now. Watch your crossfire. Hey, I got a big ass shield in the back of my K9 car if you want to grab it. Uh, all right, we're good. Hold up, hold up. Line of fire is west. Drop the fucking gun! What's the address here? Hey. Don't shoot me. Denver police, drop the weapon! One person talk right now. We don't need 18 people talk. He's on the lead. Hey, I'll, I'll talk. He's talking. See if you can push through the back. Hey, this is the Denver police. I need you. Hey, you need to listen. Come out right now with your hands up. We're communicating right now. Back up. Yeah, guys, back push up. right, back push up. right. Hey, stop push right. moving! Hey, I'll, I'll stop push moving back right now! Do not move! Back up. Keep back talking. Up. Keep talking. Back Keep talking. Back up. Get some back up. cover over here. Pull some cars up. Hey, pull the car up. Pull the car up. House locked down. Too. Up. Everybody, back up. Back hey, I'm up. with you, Knight. Let's go. Come on, back up. Move back. Move back. Hey. Ludwig, go get go get night shield out of this car now. Pull, and pull your car up here. Somebody get a shield. They're grabbing my big back in that. Yeah. Yes. Hey, I'm gonna go get I'm gonna go get a long gun. They're talking to him.
Somebody. All right, buddy. You got an ambulance code 10? Yeah. Denver 462, Henry. Confirm that we have an ambulance code 10. They've got one. They've got one. Scene secure 16050. Yeah, I think I'm good, man. The Denver District Attorney's Office will review the details of this incident and determine if the officer's actions were in compliance with Colorado law. After the District Attorney renders a decision, the Denver Police Department's Internal Affairs Bureau and Conduct Review Bureau will complete an administrative review of this case. The details of the case will be presented to a Use of Force Review Board, which is made up of community members and police command officers. This board will determine whether the actions of the Denver police officers were in compliance with the high standards expected of every Denver police officer related to policies, training, and tactics. For additional information regarding the investigation of critical incidents or the Denver Police Department's use of force policies, you may visit denvergov.org police. Thank you for taking the time to view this critical incident briefing.